In this video, we'll be talking about the different controllers available for plugins inside of Mixcraft. Mixcraft offers a variety of controller types you can use for your plugins, even if they're third party VSTs. These controllers can be assigned to any available parameter of a plugin, opening many exciting possibilities to get even more mileage out of your favorite instruments and effects. Before we begin, let's take a listen to the loop I've set up here today. In order to begin using the different controller types, we'll first need to open a plugin. Let's begin by taking a look at this filter plugin on the lead synth here. To begin adding different controller types, we can expand this window down with the down arrows here. Then we can select the plus button at the top or the plus button within the window. Once you've selected this, you'll see the available controllers. There's audio, MIDI, and LFO. To kick things off, let's add an LFO controller to this filter. Once you've selected a controller type, you'll see the available options for that controller, including the parameter that's targeted, the waveform, in this case specific to the LFO controller, the minimum and maximum values, the current value, the sync mode, and the frequency control here. Let's say we want to target the cutoff frequency of this LFO. To do that, we can go into the parameter and select cutoff. As you can see, the cutoff is now moving around in time with the LFO. If you're not sure of the parameter, you can click the Learn button and then move the parameter you would like to target, and we'll see that now the cutoff has been targeted once again. The minimum and maximum set the value range, so we can set this to control the filter but maybe not go all the way down to the bottom. Here we can select the frequency sync, it can either be unsynced here, where we can just set a arbitrary value, or sync it and set it to a tempo-based value. Now if we give this loop a play, we should hear the filter cutoff moving around on the lead synth. One of the particularly interesting control types is audio rate control. Let's add an audio rate controller by selecting the plus button here and selecting add audio controller. Once again, we can set the various parameters for the controller. In this case, I wanna target the resonance or Q of the filter, and then we'll select the track that's going to target it. For this instance, I want the kick drum to trigger the filter resonance. Then in the type, we can select between dry, pre, or post fader. Since the kick doesn't have all that much going on, we'll leave it on dry for now. From here, once again, we can set our parameters, including the minimum and maximum values, then switch between linear or logarithmic mode, and then adjust the attack and release. If we give this a play right now, we should see the resonance spike every time the kick drum hits. To smooth out that spiking, let's add some release time. Finally, to cap things off, let's explore the MIDI controller. On my kick drum track here, I have this bit crushing effect and I would really like to target the sample rate over time and control this with my MIDI controller. To do that, we'll expand the window here and then add a MIDI controller. Now let's select our parameter, in this case it's going to be the sample rate, and then our CC message. My MIDI controller has quite a few different controls on it and I'm not entirely sure what the CC number is for the knob I'd like to use. So in this case, I can select learn and then wiggle my controller and it will automatically report the CC number. Now, as you can see, when I move the fader on my controller, we get a different sample rate. As usual, we can set the minimum and maximum values. In this case, let's move the minimum up ever so slightly so we don't go absolutely down to nothing to where it's not quite audible and gives us a more usable range overall. Now that we've set this up, we can open our automation lane if it's not already by selecting the toggle automation control here then we'll right click on the automation track and make sure that record all effect and instrument automation is checked. Now we can go back here to the beginning and arm the track for recording and then we'll record and I'll move my controller and we'll see that the bit crush effect gets targeted with my controller. At this point, you should understand how to use the various controller types inside of Mixcraft for your plugins. And that wraps everything up for this video, so thanks for watching. 